So I'm Randy Boyd, I'm CEO of the Radio Systems, and I've been with the company uh, since day one, which would have been June of 1991. Uh, Eric Gray, uh, been with the company for 15. I'm just joking. 13 years in December. And uh, accounts receivable associate. My name is Anita White. I am the Associate Director of the Innovations Team at Radio Systems, and I have been here 13 years this past March. My name is April Burnett, and my title is Senior Accounts Receivable Associate, and I've been with the company for 19 years in January. Uh, my name is Shane Gregg. Uh, I work for Logistics, work in the Art Radio Systems Logistics Department, and I have been here since March 18th of 1993. Uh, my name is Angela Jones. I've been with the, my title is uh, U.S. Order Management Rep, and I've been with the company for 18 years. My name is Walt Frankwich. My title is Director of Quality, and I've been with the company for a little over 21 years. My name is Steve Baker, uh, currently Vice President of Logistics for Radio Systems Corporation. Uh, I've been here a little over 20 years, started in January of 1993. Carrie Green. Uh, title is Corporate Executive Liaison, and I've been here 21 years. My name is Philip Green. I'm Program Manager for the ATE Group, and as of July of this year, I've been here 21 years. 20 years ago, the company looked like about uh, 15 people. We were uh, inside of a trailer, or actually a couple of trailers. And uh, it was a much smaller company, and uh, it's very relaxed. And so it's a, it's a little bit different than it is today. When I first started working here, I started out in um, customer service. Mary Lindsay hired me. I did all their invoicing. I did all of their credit card uh, transactions with a machine. Key punched every credit card in and I did that. Then I moved over to customer service. I was a team lead, and then from team lead, I went into order management, and that's where I've been ever since. I don't have any fun moments here at RSC. I had one when I was, uh, it's, it's not really funny, you know. I was uh, on the first floor in the office. I was leaning back in my chair, you know. I don't know why I was doing it. <clears throat> But it had wheels on the bottom, right? So I lost my balance. And uh, man, I hit pretty hard, man. It was a loud thud. It was real loud. I didn't think it was, I didn't think anybody noticed. So I figured if I just lay here for a second, then everybody just keep doing what they're doing, right? So like about three seconds, man. I look over, right? And there's a uh, Willie Wallace, like over the wall. <clears throat> Looking, I mean, he come from halfway across the room over and just looking, was looking over the wall and I was like that. I don't know if that was, that was more embarrassing. It was an embarrassing moment. You know what I'm saying? That, was, that wasn't that funny. That was, that was pretty embarrassing. I was like, man, so that's not really funny. Well, you laughing, but it's not really, it's, you know, for me, it's an embarrassing moment. So for you, maybe it's just a funny, that's, so that's, maybe that's the funniest, man, but that, that wasn't, that wasn't that funny. They do make fun of me because I had to jump a chair and a desk once to save Dick Firestone's life. It's so many funny moments because it's so many things, but I'm not going to go into all of those. But I would say the funniest moment was when we were uh, testing uh, these um, electronic things to see if deterrents, bug deterrents, uh, rodent deterrents. And they conned Shane Gregg, who's been here just longer than me. I'm not allowed to tell him stories. <laughs> they had bought these roaches, big fat roaches. So they had bought some laboratory cockroaches. And they were in this little container and the, the product was here and it had a glass lid over it or a plexiglass lid over it. And somehow I would got worked up to deal that I would eat one for $10. And they conned, well they got him to eat one. So. And I think they, they offered him a $5 or a 12-pack of beer. And these things was about that big, about that wide, they were big. But he had to actually crunch it. And you know when you crunch it, 
that stuff comes out of it. And Jim come back and got me one day. He said, you said you'd do it, so let's do it. So he took me up front to the office and I pulled one out and he pulled out the money and I, there was a few other people around, Jesse Merritt and uh, I chomped down and chewed that cockroach up and got my $10. <laughs> he did get to drink his Mountain Dew with it. And um, I think it was just for like $5 or a 12 pack of beer. And that was too funny to me. It was sickening too, but it was funny. We were friends for a um, year, year and a half. Yeah. And um, just hang out, talk, stuff like that. And um, I don't know, he stopped me one day um, getting ready to leave. And he said, hey, wait up and I'll walk you out. And I said, okay. And uh, he was talking about um, what did I think about uh, dating I people no you worked I'd, with. I had no idea what I was talking and uh, I was like, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea because when you break up, somebody's going to have to get another job. I had no idea he was talking about me. I was clueless. And um, then he said, hey, do you want to go out? And I said, sure. So, and I think after that date, we were See, together. See, one thing, does, you know. We were not. together forever. <laughs> I don't think we've ever. We got yeah. uh, engaged maybe four months later and then married nine months. Or nine months from the time from we started the time dating. We started dating. So. Yeah. Where would I like to see the company go? I would like to see us grow, um, not to the extent that we become a um, a Microsoft or a um, Apple um, to the corporate size that we get bogged down and um, refrained and our culture changes um, due to the, I don't wanna say bureaucracy, but just the, the ideals behind a, a large corporate, publicly owned company. I, I would hope that um, we stay privately held, um, that we can maintain the culture, um, the environment um, that we currently have. I grew up, I guess I grew up uh, at RSC, you know, I um, became uh, I'm more of a responsible uh, adult here at RSC. So, you know, I, I mean, I've been, been here since my, my 20s, since I was in my 20s. I'm about to hit 40 in another year. So, <clears throat> you know, just to say RSC somewhat raised me from a, a, a young adult and, and then brought me to where I'm at now. So, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've took a lot of um, a lot of good from RSC and applied it to my personal life, you know, so, yeah. I, I guess as I reflect on the possibility that uh, my time here will be coming to an eventual end, uh, I'm not sure when and, and hopefully not anytime soon, um, the legacy that I would like to leave is just uh, recognition, even if it's just personal recognition that um, I was a contributor, um, helped uh, the organization, um, get to the level it's at, and most importantly, it contributed to the um, um, philosophy, if you will, the, uh, the, the work environment, uh, helped to uh, uh, create the environment that all associates enjoy, and uh, not only associates, but the communities that we live in, uh, that the legacy of radio systems lives on, and that uh, I, I'm confident in my contribution to that legacy. My ultimate goal for Radio Systems this is a good question because we do want to be a billion dollar company someday in the future, but that's really just a white point. From there, the minute we get there, I can, I can already guarantee the next goal will be a $10 billion company. But it's really not so much about the, the sales revenue or the EBITDA or all those things we normally track. It's about having something that's sustainable. We talk about being built to last. What my ultimate goal would be would be to leave this earth with a company that's still in good standing, that's still making a difference both in its products and with its people in the community. And so that would be the, the long-term ultimate goal. Um, over time, eventually we will be in other categories besides pets. Um, we'll continue, I think, uh, in the solely focused on the pet industry probably for the next decade, but there are so many other opportunities that we could leverage our people and our technology 
uh, into these other categories that eventually will we'll do that.